Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. In this video, I want to show you how to use our new Unpivot capability, which is available in ClickSense 3.1. So to get started, I have a data file available here, and it's in the form of, I guess you can call it a Excel report. We have some heading information. We have a tab that denotes if it's a northern or southern region. We have our header row with our attributes here apples, bananas, and oranges that are actually acting like header columns and our order date. So we're going to take this file and we're going to use it as a data source. Now you could always do this using data load script and the cross table function. However, we've made that a little bit easier utilizing a user interface. So let me give you an example. Now I've already created a app and I'm going to load data into it. And I'm going to click the add data button and I'm going to go to attach files and I'm going to drop my Excel report file right here and that uploads it and attaches it to the app. Now you'll notice that I have the southern tab selected and you can see I have a header size where I can increment this to basically skip these particular rows. So we're going to skip four times and you can see that row that we had with apples, bananas, and oranges, that's actually going to now become our new column headers. And at this point, we're done. So what I'm going to do is now go into prepare data, and this will bring us into our data manager. It defaults to the visual representation of the table. I'm going to go to the table viewer and then click on the edit button. And now you'll notice that I have a button here called unpivot. So the concept here is that we're basically just transposing to rows. We're going to take these columns and we're going to turn that into a dimension or an attribute called item. So we simply click on pivot and I choose those columns and then I click apply on pivoting. Okay. And then I just rename the field. So in this case here, we're going to call this item and then this one here which is our metric or a measure, we're going to call that sales. And that's all you need to do. Now, one thing I do want to point out, you'll notice if we look at the data under state, we scroll down, you're going to see we have some total columns here. Okay. So we need to get rid of those total columns. So we can do that within the data load script. So I'm going to click load data. And then we'll go into edit the sheet. And then in here we can go into the data load editor. And then we can go to the auto generated section. And this is basically what that interface created. You can see it's still using the cross table function. And then now you can fine tune this. So I'm going to unlock this. So I have access to the editor. And then right here, I'm just going to put a clause that says where state not equal to total. Okay. And that will clean out the total value. And now we can load that data again. And then we can go back to the app overview and go back to the sheet. Now, if we edit the sheet, we can actually now create a visualization. So what I'm going to do here is let's just grab a table and a dimension. Let's grab our items and there's our apples, bananas, and oranges. And let's get our fields. Let's grab sales and let's do sum of sales. Okay. And there is our sum of sales. And just to verify that this is correct, you can see we have a total of 48,292 and there's our totals for apples, bananas, and oranges. Let's go back to the Excel report. If I scroll down, you can see our total is 48,292. And then there's our totals for the apples bananas and oranges, 5,005, 4,009, 37,000. So if I switch back, 5,005, 49, and 37,000 for oranges. Okay, so just a quick example of how to use the unpivot functionality. Do note that this works with simple cross tables. As I showed you, I had to go into the data load editor. Uh, just to give you a quick example, going back into the data load editor, if I wanted to include that northern section of the data, I basically would just copy this, control C, control V, or I can add a new section. So maybe I'll just call this Northern. 
and paste it. Change our table label to Northern. Change the name of the tab to Northern. Just let me correct that. And then we just click load data. And what this will do is this will actually concatenate both Southern and Northern values together. Okay, so it still will be one table. So if we go into the data model viewer, you can see that we still have one table here. And if we select, in that case, the table is just named Southern, but if we look at the values here, it's gonna contain all of the values for Northern and Southern. So what you might say is, okay, well, how do I distinguish which is northern and which is southern. Okay, well what you can do in this instance here where we're accessing southern, we can create a new field and we can make it a constant and we can just say value southern as region. And then what we do is we increase our attribute value to three. Okay. And then the same thing for Northern. Northern is a constant value. And then we'll say as region, increase our attribute value to three. Okay, when I mean three here, by the way, that is the region, the state, and the order date. That's this order here. There is a video that goes into more detail on reshaping your data. It's actually a three-part series you can review. But right now, I'll just load that data again. Go to our app overview. Go to our sheet. Let's grab our field. And now you can see I have a region field. Add region. Let's put region in the front. And now you can see southern, northern, southern, etc. Okay, so you have southern, northern apples, northern, southern bananas, etc. And if you want to see those particular totals, let's go to an inline. Let's just select northern. And here are the totals for northern. So 25,009. Let's go to northern. 25,009. And then once again, for the apples, bananas, and oranges, 498012, 498012. Okay, and that's how you could add a particular constant. And you'll notice how it concatenated both those particular tables. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, please post them where this video is posted, and uh, I will include the sample data and sample app in the community document. Thanks for your time, guys. Have a good one. Talk to you soon and see you on the next video.